Shalom, sisters, and welcome to another episode. I'm your sister, Shiyar Yasha'ala. So today we're going to dive into Proverbs 31. I think this is such an important scripture for us to go into because the Proverbs 31 woman is a woman that we want to fashion ourselves after. She's the blueprint of how a woman should be as a mother and as a wife inside of the home. When I first read about her, I cried. I said, I can't be her. She's perfect. But after learning more and becoming more confident in myself, when I look at the women in scriptures and I look at myself, I see I already had a lot of her qualities. It was just more of a mindset that needed to change with coming into the truth. Proverbs 31 is interesting for us sisters because it's a mother giving her son advice in life about how to pick a wife. The mother, Queen Bathsheba, the son, King Lamel, who we later learn is actually King Solomon. Queen Bathsheba was married to Uriah the Hittite, who was a part of King David's army. King David actually seduced her and she became pregnant. In an attempt to cover up the pregnancy, King David tried to convince Uriah to go home and sleep with his wife one more time in order to make it seem as though the child was his. But Uriah refused because the custom of war was for men to not go home and to sleep with their wives. Because he refused, King David put him on the front line of war and Uriah was killed. David then married Queen Bathsheba. But they were punished for this because the Most High decided to kill that child that they bore together. They did have another child, King Lamel, who Queen Bathsheba is speaking to in this verse. So the reason why she's giving this advice to him is because she knows that her actions is what made everything else transpire with her husband being killed and her child being killed. So she wanted to give David a warning to not find a woman so much like herself, find a woman better. And that's what we want to do as mothers, to teach our children to do better than the things that we've done in life. We want to teach them to do right. Let's dive in and take a look at this Proverbs 31 woman. Some people think that she's impossible, like I first thought when I first read about her. But if you actually look into her, she, she's very possible. Proverbs 31 and 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. What is a virtuous woman? The Bible dictionary defines her as a woman of ability, a woman of power, a woman of strength. All the women of the scriptures were strong women. They were strong in their own right. For her price is far above rubies. Women seem to look towards diamonds, rings, necklaces, and all other types of jewelry. But in actuality, a ruby holds more value. 11. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need to spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She's always going to do right by him. And he trusts that because she is a righteous woman. She is a woman of the scripture. She knows the laws and she keeps the laws. She will do good to him through those laws. And she won't do evil towards him. Anything that is against the most high, any sin she will not do. To Verse 13. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar. So she works with her hands in order to provide food and clothing for her family. Some sisters may sew. That's a beautiful gift that you can use in order to provide clothing for your family and then to also help bring in the income. We are creators. We are creative women. We have to embrace that more. Verse 15. She riseth while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. So she works late nights and she's up early in the morning to make sure she provides for everyone in her household, from her husband down to her maidens who serve her and help her. Verse 16, she considereth the field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands, she planteth the vineyard. She grindeth her loins with her strength and strengtheneth her arms. So she goes out, she seeks ways to bring in money, 
But not only does she take care of her family, she takes care of herself physically. We, we work hard to provide for our families and do for them. But we also have to remember to care for ourselves too. How can we really care for our families if we don't care for ourselves? We pour into everybody else. We have to pour in ourselves. She also. loves her husband so much that she wants to make sure she provides for him at home. And then she also has to give him a little eye candy too. Verse 18. She perceived that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. She not only knows that the value of the work that she does with her hands, but she knows the value of herself. It's about having confidence and being confident in who you are and what you bring. A woman, a woman has to walk upright with her head held up at all times. No one wants to see a woman who doesn't believe in herself. If you don't believe in you, no one else will believe in you and what you bring forth. 20. She stretcheth her hand out to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. So not only does she help those in her household, but outside of her household too. If I have more and my sister has less, then I'm worth nothing. If I cook dinner for my family and I have leftovers and I know my sister down the street, she, she's having a hard time right now, I'll take those extras and I'll give that to my sister and her family. And this goes for our works also. If we see a sister who needs help in her walk and we're able to help, we can't just sit back and just watch. We have to reach out to that sister and help her. So we help it in our household and we help outside of our households too. Verse 21. She is not afraid of the snow for her household. For all our household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. So her whole family, they look good. They're clothed in the finest linens that she can provide for them. Verse 23. This is an important one for us, sisters. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. So because she is so diligent in her work and she does so well, she takes stress off of his head so that he can focus on his work and become known in the gates. Because the men's work is to go out and to bring in other men to go out and teach. And we're supposed to be the keepers at home. So if we're freeing up his mind and his space and his time so that he doesn't have to worry about those other things, he can focus in on his work. Let's look at Ecclesiasticus or Sirach 38 and 24. And it reads, the wisdom of a learned man cometh by opportunity of leisure, and he that hath little business shall be wise. So that just goes to show that a man needs to be able to study and to focus and to do his work. And us as wives being their help meets, we help take that burden off of them so that they can do what they need to do in order to do the work of the Most High. They, they do the work of the Most High and we support them and take care of their things. Verse 24. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and deliver girdles unto the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come. So not only is she physically clothed in fine linen, but spiritually she's clothed in fine linen. When you see her, you see grace and honor. You see a woman of stature. Verse 26. She openeth her mouth with wisdom and her tongue is the law of kindness. So whenever she speaks, she only speaks what is wise. She only speaks wisdom. But what is wisdom? Deuteronomy chapter four, verses five and six. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Most High commanded me, that ye should do so in the land, whether ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. So wisdom are the laws, statutes, and commandments. And that is all that she speaks. Verse 27. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, he praiseth her. So her family loves her and appreciates the work that she puts forward. Because she does it with love. She does it with care. She does it in sincerity. Verse 29. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou exceedeth them all. Favor is deceitful. 
So that favor is to be charming, to say all the right things, but not for the right reasons. It's not from your heart. It's not pure. And beauty is vain. To be vain is to be conceited, to be narcissistic, to be self-serving. But a woman that feareth the Most High shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. That's the Proverbs 31 woman. She's very attainable. She's you. She's me. We have to strip ourselves of what the world tells us that a wife and a mother should be. And look into the scriptures. Look at what Queen Bathsheba laid before us when she gave this example to her son. Step into this role. Don't be afraid of our greatness. Encourage one another through sisterly love and be in examples to one another. That's what we need to do. P31 is possible. Love you. Shalom. Music, music.